me. The Washington Post editorialized this week that the economy seems to be stuck in neutral now and Washington seems at a loss at how to fix it. The Post also suggested that uh, the Republicans and Democrats are in such an ideological gridlock here that you may be unable to do anything about it. Uh, what do you say to that, Mr. Hoyer? I hope that's not the case. Uh, I hope that we will uh, be able to reach agreement on a number of very important things. Uh, first of all, uh, the debt limit extension. Uh, this is causing uh, roiling the markets, uh, giving great apprehension in the business community, uh, not only here but around the world. Uh, secondly, I think uh, we ought to be able to get together on substantial deficit reduction and debt reduction over the long term. Uh, I think we have that responsibility. The American public expect that. Uh, in the last election, they were concerned about two major uh, issues from my perspective. That is jobs, uh, getting jobs for them and their, and their families and their people, their neighbors, uh, getting this deficit under control. Uh, we ought to work together to do that. If we can work together, I think that's going to raise the confidence level here and around the world, and I think that will in itself have a very substantive effect. Well, do you think, I mean, you know, saying you hope, and I appreciate what you're saying, but you hope you can do that. Can you do it, Mr. Ryan? Well, Is there a way here? I think it's Washington's policies over the last few years that have given us this slow economic growth, this stagnation, enormous tax uncertainty, enormous regulatory uncertainty because of health care and financial laws, and debt uncertainty. On the last one, debt uncertainty, meaning are we going to get our act together and prevent a debt crisis? That is where I hope we can get a down payment on the problem. And this debt limit negotiation, from my perspective, given that there's no budget, I mean, it's been 774 days since the Senate passed a budget. That means that budget process is done. So hopefully in the debt limit negotiations, we can get a down payment on spending cuts and debt reduction. And I think that would help calm the markets and help us get to a recovery. Well, well let Bob, me just well, say let me, this. Let me say yeah, that if I can. Uh, Paul, you and I both know it's not realistic to say and that the problem results from the last two years. In point of fact, uh, we had the worst yes. recession starting in December of 07 under policies that you no. supported and President Bush uh, promoted. Uh, and uh, we had uh, three million jobs lost in the last so, year of the Bush administration, which was under the policies Absolutely. That so you let me proposed. agree with you, Stanley, for yeah. a second. He, President Obama inherited a tough right. problem. No two ways about it. I'm not suggesting that's not the case. What I'm saying is I think what he's done since then is to make matters worse, not better. I think the economic policies that the president has pushed through Congress into law have made this recovery harder to sustain itself. And that, to me, is he inherited a tough problem, and he didn't go with the right policies. He went with the wrong policies. And I think that is why we have very anemic economic growth. But don't you have to? Paul and okay. I disagree on that. After all, Mark Zandi, who we like to quote, who yeah, is, I know you always say we love to quote him because he's not a Democrat. He was. Uh, uh, John McCain's <clears throat> economic advisor, Paul, and he and others, uh, Republicans, Marty Feldstein, not, not uh, uh, somebody that we used to Did you to read quote. his op-ed in Friday's Wall Street Journal? I did not. Okay. But the fact of the matter is I did read some of his op-eds at the time we were considering what we needed to do to respond to this deepest well, recession. Well, let me just ask you this. Forget about what the economist said. Look at the results. The economy is flat. The, the economy and has was put in the deepest recession that we've had since the, the deep depression of the Hoover right. Well, let, let me right. just ask Usually both you, the two of you are sitting out. here. Yes. You're both reasonable men, and you, and you like one another. We, you personally are our friends. <laughs> Tell me something that the Congress could agree on that would make this situation better. What would you, where would you start? Let me say that where I would start is with Bowles Simpson. Uh, we is what the Bowles Simpson the Commission, uh, Erskine okay. Bowles, this the is Commission, the Deficit Commission, uh, the, the President Deficit appointed. Commission. And the reason I say we ought to start with that is because uh, we had a process. I wanted to see a statutory commission appointed uh, that would have had real teeth. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get the votes in the Senate. Largely, Republicans wouldn't give us the votes to get that bill on the floor. So we, so the President put in place a commission. That p commission was bipartisan. Paul served on that commission. They did some very substantive work. Not only did they do substantive work, but you saw three uh, Republican members of Congress and three Democratic members of Congress support it, along with uh, Bowles, a Democrat, and Simpson, uh, a Republican. And you saw five out of the six members of the, uh, the president appointees support it, uh, which means that it got 11 votes. Very frankly, had Paul and uh, Mr. Camp and Mr. Henseling supported, it would have had the 14 well, out of 18, so, no, let me say, we start, which would have meant then 
both senator reid and then speaker pelosi had pledged if they got fourteen out of eighteen votes they would have put it on the floor was it perfect not perfect but it certainly serves as a basis i think for bipartisan uh... well let's see what so so what happened was the president then disavowed his own commission he put out a budget that did nothing to fix the problem republicans since we didn't like all the details in the commission we took a dozen or so ideas from the commission put it in our budget and we passed a budget to fix this problem to pay off the debt to grow the economy to save medicare to fix the social safety net and we put our plan out there then the president just launched another commission the biden commission which is now underway we need real leadership on this steny has exercised leadership but not every democrat is steny hoyer in the white house and in well, the Senate. well mr ryan tell me this what is one thing that you could say uh, Republicans are willing to do this that you think Mr. Hoyer might go along with. I think most people agree we have a big spending problem in Washington. Uh, it, that it's inescapable. And so we do want to get spending under control. We've simply said very easily, for every dollar that people want to raise the debt limit, we should cut more than a dollar's worth of spending. We put $6.2 trillion of spending cuts on the table. There's plenty to choose from. And so we'd like to think that somewhere that the Democrats will be willing to get spending under control so, to get this debt under control. L let me say the reason I start with the commission. What did the commission do? Everything was <clears throat> on the table. Now, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Ryan uh, and others have taken spending, excuse me, revenues off the table. We, he's right. We need to constrain and cut spending where appropriate, both on uh, domestic, uh, on defense, on entitlements, uh, so that we get a handle on spending. But at the same time, what the commission said supported by th three uh, Republican members of the Congress of the United <coughs> States in the United States Senate, uh, said we need to do, uh, also have revenues as a component. So that the problem I have with Paul and where Paul and I have a difficulty is, Paul is a, is a Kemp disciple, if you will, supply side Guilty. economics. Yeah. <laughs> supply side economics, frankly, well. has failed. It failed in the uh, regulation where we incurred $1.4 trillion in new deficits. It failed in the Steady, Bush one. Steady, well, the, you, the commission you, recommended supply-side economics. Let me, the let commission me recommended you, lowering let me tax just, rates. Let me just say something that is, here. No, that is pro-growth economics. So Erskine Paul, Bowles is saying lower tax rates Paul, for economic I, and growth. I, and you, as you know, I agree with that. So but we that agree does, with that. But no, you, you don't think that revenues ought to be any part of this. No, component. we think revenues should grow by growing the economy, and raising tax rates hurts economic <laughs> growth. All right, let me ask you. Let me ask you. Both of you. Both of you. But Bob, that's an important point because, Paul, <clears throat> with all due respect. That was your argument in 1981. That was your argument in 1981. I was a kid in 1981. So <laughs> not your personal but, argument. So, so, but our argument Kemp's, is, but your okay, so Kemp's. Now listen to me. That was the argument in 1981. Uh, uh, that was the argument in 2001. And both times we right. had continuing large deficits. So deficit difference today deficits. is we're putting up the spending cuts. Difference today is we're putting out the spending controls okay. and the tax reform to go. I, I got it. And I congratulate spending you controls for that. and tax reform for economic growth. Is but what, what you're also for. doing is... I can tell you want to get it. <laughs> what, what you're also doing is you're doing it in a, in a partisan way. Clearly your Medicare proposal was rejected soundly. We don't need to change Medicare's guarantee in order to uh, make sure that it's fiscally sustainable. So when uh, you say partisan, we took this idea from Bill Clinton's commission that John Broad shared. It's an have, idea that originally came from the Brookings Institution. You didn't have one institution. conservative Democrat vote for it and no I liberal think, Democrat. I, I wonder who's being partisan about Medicare these days and who's not. Well, uh, the sooner we deal with Medicare, the better off we all are. I, Look, and don't you, you have to agree, agree going to Medicare. Medicare. I have said everything ought to be on the table. To, you, you know. you, uh, Medicare, yeah. I think and there's nobody who doesn't say that Medicare could possibly sustain in its current state. It's going to go broke. Don't you have to reform it? Mr. Ryan wants to replace it, but and that's, that's the, one thing. Issue, but I mean, reform. with the guarantee, the difference it, is the, 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 we, want to, we don't want changes for current seniors because we should keep the promise. Well, made that's to them. not accurate. And so, well, for the next for the next generation, we think we got to go to a system that's solvent and secure. More money for the poor, more money for the sick, less money for the wealthy. Steny and I were two of I think 18 Republicans and Democrats in 2009. <laughs> right. Just two two of 18 to vote against increasing benefits for wealthy seniors. Right. So there hopefully is a coalition evolving where we should Paul and I have some areas of, of agreement as you hear, Bob. Uh, but when Paul says there are no cuts to uh, uh, those uh, who are currently on Medicare, that's not accurate. Uh, he repeals the Affordable Care Act. He repeals oh, uh, the, the wellness uh, uh, provisions, the uh, benefits that are in there. He, pre he repeals the preventive uh, benefits, and he repeals the uh, uh, 
help that we give to prescription drug uh, for those in the donut hole. So uh, to say that no benefits are changed. But having said that, what Paul should have learned, what all of us should have learned, is if we're going to move forward in a fiscally responsible way and, and politically adopt, not just talk about, adopt an objective, it will be because we work together and very frankly come well, to a solution together. The mistake we made was we took an idea that used to be a democratic idea, supported by Democrats in the 1990s, <laughs> and we foolishly thought perhaps this is the start of bipartisan talks, and what we got was partisanship. What well, we got I, was gentlemen, I, I would love to well, continue we, this, we, but we've got been Lindsey a lot of Graham. Lindsey Graham is on, waiting on, in the yeah, wings down in Clemson. Yeah, right, right. I've, <laughs> I've got to talk to him in a second. Thanks, both of you. Thank you. Uh,